If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are checking out the TDS GTNXI. In this case, we'll be looking at the 750, but there's quite a few more options that come with this particular model, so let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so as we get into this, let's start talking about a few things. First off, I know that there's the PMS 50 GTN 750 as well that has both a freeware and a payware version. Guys, I'm very aware of it. I have been using it for a very long time. This is merely an alternative with a few other differences um, in the operation of it, a few more features, some few less features. It really depends on how you want to use it. My preference in this particular device is the way that it is able to be very seamlessly used on a touchscreen monitor. And you guys are going to see some pros and cons to that. Okay. Everything that you guys are about to see about how I'm using it is going to be on a touchscreen in the true aspect that it's actually existing. And I have the um, touchscreen monitor. It's about a 10 and a half inch touchscreen in uh, portrait mode. So that way uh, it lines up with the way the 750 would normally be. So. Let's walk through a few things. First off, I'm going to get this right out of the door here, you guys. It's not the cheapest thing in the world running in it. Right about 53 US dollars. It's called 60 bucks after taxes and all that good jazz. Okay, but it's got quite a bit of features that are actually quite impressive. First off, it has a training mode that actually allows you to play with it outside of the simulator, which is kind of actually handy. I didn't think I was going to dig that at first. I didn't really see much of a point to it, but found more and more use for it as I started playing around with it. Second thing, it has both integrated and external features um, in regards to the use with inside of the simulator. What do I mean by that? You guys are going to see it on the external or standalone mode is what you guys are going to see it as say. And what that's going to do, it's actually going to disable the GTN 750 with inside of the cockpit. Okay, but it's going to be used on the touchscreen. Now, there's obviously integrated where the GTN or the TDS GTN um, will actually display inside the cockpit as we're used to, for example, with the PMS 50. Now, of course, you can always export screens out, but as many of you may or may not be aware of, when it comes to the use of touch screens, Microsoft Flight Simulator is not friendly with them. Why it's been all this time and we still don't have very accurate or very adequate, I should say, touchscreen support is beyond me, given the fact that they are so heavily used in real world aircraft now. Um, so that part, that I could go on a rant all day about that, so I'll leave that alone. Now, before anyone gets into it, yes, there are things like pop-out panel manager that make that extremely better and definitely add a much needed feature. But again, this offers an ability to use a one-stop shop where you don't have to have multiple programs in order to make a touch screen work. And I would say for me personally, this is where the advantage is super strong. The advantage is super strong in the aspect of in use with a touch screen at a home built cockpit. Now I want you to think about all the different things that can be used as a touch screen guys and how easy it is to integrate them with your PCs these days, whether it be a Kindle or a tablet or an iPad, there are ways to integrate them with PC as a secondary or third, fourth, 10,000th monitor, however you want to do it. And then therefore create make the use of something like this much, much more effective. Now, it's got a lot of the same things that the PMS 50 has as far as GTN uh, 50 operation. Now, the one thing that it does not do that I would like to see a little bit better done is it uses a its own Jepson chart integration versus Navigraph charts. I would really like to see Navigraph charts be something that is involved in it, but as far as I can tell thus far to date, it doesn't seem to work with it very well. However, everything else on it is just fine, and there's nothing wrong with Jepson charts. The Jepson charts work perfectly great. The other thing that's really nice is the top-down satellite view, especially for airport navigation. You guys are going to get to see some of that. Um, so a lot of the features that you would find very useful in um, Navigraph charts are still here, just in kind of a different format. So bear with me on that as we start moving forward through this, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start getting into the actual um, operation of the software itself. 
So, by the way, you have the GTN 650, you have the GTN 750. Give me a second because I know there's more than that. So, give me two seconds here. Get a hold of my mouse because it's all over the place, apparently. Um, you can have up to, I believe it is four different units. So, four different pop outs of it. You can change the navigation source. Um, let's go to avionics here. Yeah. So, right now, the only ones I currently have installed are the GTN 650XI and the GTN 750XI. And we're going to be using the 750XI as it integrates by default without any issue with the uh, TBM 850. Um, so, let's go ahead and get back into the cockpit here. All right. So, first off, right out of the gate, you can see the GTN. There it is, the GTN 750XI. Now you have a couple of different options. Now the one thing that um, on the touch screen that I'm currently using that I am having a problem with is putting it into full screen mode. You guys can't see it because I'm only tracking the application. But in the monitor, I can still see the white title bar above it, which I don't like. But every time I try to disable it, the screen just disappears. So I don't know if that's a bug with this particular touchscreen. Now, with that being said, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven monitors plugged in right now through various sources. So that could be causing some of the issues. There's a lot of there's always a lot of goofy stuff when it comes to my particular setup. But here's the other cool thing that you can do as well especially, and it works just fine on a touchscreen, and that is you can show the bezel. Now, you guys, it's going to look really skewed for you right now. And again, that has to do with the aspect ratio that I'm using on my touchscreen. But the um, rotaries, the knobs do work. So you guys, for example, if we go to the map, I'm going to use the bottom rotary, and you guys can see I can zoom in and out. Now, it's a little funky. Um, I would still recommend using some sort of external, and that's why I turned it off. Um, and just the buttons in general seem to work better. So let's go ahead and turn the bezel off. Um, but you guys have a bunch of different features. You can set the TOS mode, whether it be TOS A, B, and I believe there's a C, the TOS voice type. You can set transponder settings, where, for example, our VFR is automatically 1200. Airplane type, low wings, high wings, etc. cetera. Um, you can select your airplane color on the map. So for example, if we wanted to change that, um, we could do, I think I have to reload it as part of the problem. Yep, I do. Um, so I can actually show you guys that's actually done pretty well easily. We can turn it off, bring it back on. Oh, I have to reload the whole application. Oh, well, next time. So um, anyway, so obviously that is not the important part. So let's get into what you guys are probably interested in seeing. Now, first off, you guys can see that it's active without the battery power. So if you're looking for it for communication purposes, you have that ability. But let's go ahead and spin the battery up on the TBM here for a second. And let's turn the avionics switch on. You guys will notice that even though we had the GTN 750 here, we do not get anything. But let me show you what we can do. If you want to, you can actually do a bonus. We can switch it down to the GNS 530. Now I've got the 530. I also have the GTN 750. Why we'd want both, I don't know. But for example, that's been an option here anyway. Um, so, I mean, you have that option as well. And then you can keep the internal stacks here, still have your screen so it doesn't look all dim and blacked out there, right? So you still have all that functionality. But the part that I really, really, really was impressed with, and this is the part why I wanted to do the video, was the fact that, again, right now you guys are seeing me control everything with the touch screen. Okay, so, uh, oops, we actually, well, I guess I'm doing it now. I didn't mean to hit that. So, for example, we can now do, and you guys can see the response time is very nice. This is all being done with my thinner. Um, let's see here. Let's go add waypoint. And let's see here. Let's go back up, back, 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 uh, backspace. And let's say we were just going to go to, uh, yeah, let's go to the Havasu. Here it is. Okay. Um, full scrolls work. Whoa. That was me. I tapped, tapped out of the screen. That was my fault. Charts. Here's the charts I was telling you about. It uses the Jepson charts that we were talking about earlier, but we can zoom in if we want. And the zoom in button works just fine. You guys can see it lighting up there. It works just fine. Then I can just take my finger, drag it, move it around the way I want. We can change the different uh, uh, screens very easily. So all the same stuff that exists within Navigraph charts is still here. It's just slightly different. That's all it is. It's just a different layout. Um, now, I believe, if I remember correctly, yep, we can also go full screen. So if you guys just want to be able to grab it, and again, the only thing that I wish that I could do is pinch and zoom or pinch to zoom. But, you know, again, you guys can see it tracks. Oh, hey, our airplane color changed. Um, guess I just need to change the screen. 
but we can zoom all the way in. You guys can see where we're at. There's all of our tax information. So that is the nice part is it still tracks as it would in any other situation. Now, the one thing that I do wish, and actually we might be able to, let's go back to split for a second. I actually don't remember if this is an option or not. Uh, it doesn't look like it. I was looking to see if there was a dark mode for it. That would have been nice because uh, I hit the white charts, but you can also select your departures. Come back over here. Uh, from here, we'd probably be coming off the Wildcat 3. And again, simply go back to the full screen. All of your procedures and most of the services that you guys are used to with the GTN 750 in general are here or any of the Garmin series for that matter. But for example, even your transponder, we have all access to our transponder information. You guys, you guys, I typed that that fast. I mean, that is the big kicker here is that the response time, because it is not using any kind of third party application like pop out panel manager, um, because we're not having to use any kind of mouse click, um, because it is its own third party application running independent through the SIM Connect DLLs on a touch screen, the response time is going to be significantly faster than most of the other applications that we use. Not to say that they're not great. Again, I've been using pop out panel manager for a very long time, but it is one more thing that you constantly have to configure and it's a pain in the backside. I'm not, I'm not going to take away from that. I've been using it. I swear by it. I love pop out panel manager, but it's nice to have something that is actually designed around it. Um, now it's got a bunch of other really cool stuff here, guys. Um, I don't know what the phone and SMS text is all about yet. I think that that's a third party integration as well. I would love to figure that out because I think it'd be kind of cool. Music guys, you can actually set up your own music player and all of this stuff is within inside of their documentation. You can add your own checklist to it. You can add your own music to it. Um, I believe it does actually XM radio if I remember correctly, but you'd have to go back and, and go through that a bit more. And we'll do another video on this later on once I've gotten even further into this, but this is pretty slick. Um, I really love the map layout here. Once again, like we were talking about before, the lack of the need for, check this out. You can even create a waypoint if we wanted. And I know that we have that with many of the other services, but check this out. This is very seamless and it's very, very nice. So if we wanted to go here, create waypoint, boom. And then we would just change how we want it, title it, et cetera. You guys know how to create a waypoint. It's all that good jazz. Um, but you would walk through the steps here and create it. Now, if you guys don't know how to do that, I highly recommend you pick up my uh, Cessna Citation Longitude Guide as it has an updated uh, AAU2 avionics suite in it and tutorial and breaks down user waypoint creation. So it's a really, really slick system here. And uh, you have all that access right at your doorstep, if you will. Now, one of the things that I really like as I was going to show you guys is without the use of Navigraph charts or anything to that effect, it's very easy to pan around. I can see very clearly the runway. And as I zoom in, I get all of my taxiway information, just like you would see in Navigraph charts. And if this, if anything, this is actually more effective for me. Um, I actually like this setup significantly better than that when we were using Navigraph charts or something. Um, and don't get me wrong, again, Navigraph charts, swear by it, use it all the time. I even said, I still wish that this had a Navigraph charts integration, but this is pretty slick, you guys. Um, there's a bunch of other utilities and things like that that come with it. Um, you have just about everything that you could actually need in order to do this. Trip planning, tons of information here in order to get all of your information locked in, gives you ground screen and plotting. Fuel planning screen, again, all that information ready at your fingertips. Uh, your winds information. Uh, and let's see here. I think there was one for METAR as well. Give me a second and I have to remember. Oh, your VNAV information. This is actually pretty nice here. Again, once obviously you have to be at your top of descent or your uh, top of climb. Uh, but there was one more I was looking to show you guys and I have to remember where the heck it is now. So bear with me. Was it in weather? Uh, four different weather options, by the way. Four different weather options. Um, so again, some of the stuff requires other integrations. Some of it is available as is. Now we don't really have a lot going on here as well. And I don't think we're connected to it. Um, it integrates with multiple different pieces of software that I was seeing. Uh, there was something specific, darn it guys, I'm sorry. There was something that I was trying to find and I can't find it now. Anyway, um, you guys can see all the different customization options that are available here. You guys can change your shortcuts. You can change the alerts and how they, um, how, uh, what gets audibly alerted to you, your backlight information or your backlight settings. So it really is 
Awesome stuff. All of your GPS status information that we have since AAU2 is automatically in here with this. Data version information, setup information, change your units of measurement, change your time readouts. Very, very nice system. Now, the thing that I like about this, and this is where it sort of stands out to me. Now, people are, gonna, again, going to say, I know what you guys are already thinking, the PMS-50. My issue with the PMS-50, in order to get all of its advanced features, you still have to pay for it. And yes, there is now a lifetime subscription, so there's a one-and-done purchase for it now. But if I remember correctly, it's right around the same price. I think it's right around 50 US dollars. If not, I think it's you have to do a yearly subscription in order to keep it active. Uh, I just recently had to resubscribe to mine is why I am aware of that. Um, check that. I love this. I love this. This one's cool. And the terrain view is pretty awesome. Um, but anyways, so not a real detailed video or a, a in-depth video that we need to go much further here at this point here, guys. But you guys, I just wanted to see just some of the features that are readily available and on the fly. My biggest thing with this, again, is how fast it responds. Uh, I really enjoy the speed at which it replies. Um, it gives a lot of option. Um, actually, let's go ahead and stay where we were. And again, having access to the Jepson charts makes things very, very easy. Very, very easy. And the fact that it tracks the aircraft on them. So anyways, guys, not a terribly long video. I hope that you guys have found this useful. Uh, we will be doing more flights where we'll be doing the GTN 750 with the overlay. I think I'm going to keep my TBM set up sort of as we are here. Um, the guide that I'm doing for the TBM 850 will be using the GNS 530 and not the GTN 750. And uh, I'm sort of making that more complex on purpose. One, and it's kind of two prong. Prong one is that I want to learn the G the GNS 530 significantly, I, sh I should say I want to become far more familiar with it than I currently am. Um, and that would be a great way to force that situation. Um, and two, again, going with the aesthetics of the TBM 850, most of it being analog and steam gauges, I felt like the GNS 530 is about as high as I want to go uh, when it comes to complexity of the avionics suite. But we will definitely keep, that is the nice thing as I've shown you here, is the, also the ability to have the GTN 750 up, have your... Uh, um gns 530 up with the gtx um is it gtx gtx right uh gtx radio stack over here so uh or no kx excuse me kxt um radio stack so you got a lot of different options with using something like this but again where this thing shines last time i'm gonna say it is the touch screen response rate is absolutely fantastic um i think it's an incredibly fair price it is a very feature rich program uh, that I'm very, very happy to own. Um, I'm very, uh, I'm very pleased with it. Definitely very pleased with it. I intend to doing, be, uh, doing far more with it. Again, there are multiple options with it. You have the 650, you have the 750, and there are actually different, uh, further versions. Those are just the only ones that I have installed with this particular package at the time. Um, so as always, guys, let me know what you guys think down below. A link to this website will be found in the description. Stay safe and healthy, folks. I'll see you in the next one.